my name is Abraham Klein, and this is the Enzo Club. All right, we want to welcome you to the program today. Um, to start, I want to read something here. Um, it's actually an article that I wrote for a local newspaper uh, from my hometown. And I just want to sort of talk about, uh, I wasn't quite, well, actually now that I think about it, I wasn't quite sure how to fit this into the program. And because there was no real creative way to do it, I figured I would just start the program with it. And as many of us are aware, I think as all of us are aware, um, uh, things are very different right now. Um, things are very uncertain right now. In the last episode that we aired, uh, we're now, this is our third episode we've done of the Yenzer Club. Uh, the last episode uh, was aired, uh, it was a pre-taped episode. And at that point, um, there were just smatterings, if you will, of things that were going on uh, globally. And as of this episode, things are very much different. And so with that, I'm going to read this and just sort of go from there. It is quite apparent that we are living in very unique times. I say unique because I'm not quite sure how else to describe it. We are presently living in a situation that no one alive has been familiar with in this country. Over the past few weeks, we've seen our lives come to a near screeching halt as schools, businesses, and even national sporting events have simply ceased operation for the time being. Throughout the short time that we've experienced these effects of this virus, we've seen some of the best and most disappointing ways Americans can react to the crisis. We've seen innovation from organizations such as churches who have done their best to continue going forward while attempting to comply with the CDC suggested practices. Innovation from local schools to uh, ensure that students continue to receive a daily lunch despite school being postponed. We've also had to face harsh realities that come with living in uncertain times. Loved ones who look forward to a visit from someone to brighten their day must now face their time in rehab, nursing homes, or medical facility without the presence of a friendly visit. Married couples never away from one another for longer than a couple of days must now face being without their spouse for the foreseeable future. We face a time of emotional paradox. We are hesitant to show concern, yet fear being one who is unprepared. At this point, many fall into an emotional limbo as we find ourselves concerned by what has transpired, yet almost in disbelief that anything of this magnitude could even be possible in this place at this time. Despite growing numbers, we live with both worry and optimism. At the time of this being written, we live in a place of uncertainty as we wait, hope, and pray we come through the worst of this very soon. Most of all, there is the hope that soon it will be behind us and its effects be a distant memory. My desire would be that we continue to help and support one another while we can and not stoop to depravity in the face of the unknown. Innovation and support of one another is how we will make it. Staying busy in a time of nothing to do will also be a benefit. These are the times to take advantage of the opportunities that a busy schedule never allowed us to have before. These are not the times to be concerned with, the, with what divides us. The virus, as far as local news is concerned, we also find ourselves in a unique position. <laughs> Talking about local events have virtually disappeared for the time being. However, here at Yinzer Club, Idiot Radio, we will do our best to continue providing the positive content many have come to enjoy. In the absence of festivals and other events, we hope to showcase many of the great people that make up our many communities. We don't know what the next few weeks or months will hold for us all, but together with at least six feet in social distancing, we'll get through it. And, uh, and I believe that. And, uh, Again, as I've already said, we here at Idiot Radio and Yinzer Club, uh, specifically, we want to continue to try to um, talk about what's going on in the world. At the same time, we also hope to try to, to provide a bit of escapism, just something to take our minds off of everything that's going on. I know it's hard to forget 
uh, every morning we wake up, we're reminded of the total of amount of people dying, the total amount of people being infected, and I don't know, it's, it's, uh, it's a very strange time. But again, we here at Hope to try to provide something that maybe you'll like. And with that, let's move on with the program. All right, moving on. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about a uh, little bit of getting to know Yins, a famous Yinzer. Uh, or at least at one point she was famous. Maybe you don't know who she is, but as we get into this story, maybe you know maybe some other people that were involved in her life. This is the story of a woman by the name of Dolores Costello. Now, you've probably heard of guys like Michael Keaton um, or uh, Andy Warhol. They're very famous Yinzers. Very famous people that have come from this great city of Pittsburgh in western Pennsylvania. Uh, but maybe you've never heard of Dolores Costello. Uh, she was born September 17th, 1903, which is might be why you don't know who she is. <laughs> she was born to Maurice and May Costello. They, uh, she was of Irish and German descent. And uh, she is, well, she was born in Pittsburgh. Um, in 1908, when she was just five years old, it's possible she was either four or five, she debuted in an Edison, uh, in an Edison film as a little boy. And also um, as a fairy in a Midsummer Night's Dream, which was the name of the, of the show. Uh, of, the, of the movie that she was in. She starred in many films between the years 1909 to 1915 for Vitagraph film uh, and co-starred with her sister Helen. Uh, then spent her childhood in private school. So she spent a lot of her time going, uh, you know, early childhood, uh, getting her foot in the door with um, different uh, opportunities in acting. And uh, she knew she wanted to get into some sort of show business because uh, once she reached her teenage years, she left for New York City, left the uh, town of Pittsburgh, or the city of Pittsburgh, and went to New York to become a model uh, and posed for the famous, uh, I guess at that time, famous uh, photographer James Montgomery Flags. Soon uh, she became, I'm, I wrote this with my own handwriting, uh, soon she became very sought after and eventually became a chorus girl and in 1924 um, danced on Broadway and was discovered by Warner Brothers Studios during a show in Chicago. So interesting. Uh, in 1925, she met her husband, her future first husband. Uh, he was 15 years her senior, so rocking the cradle a little bit. <laughs> And uh, when he saw her, he remarked saying that she was the most preposterously lovely creature in the world. So I guess he, he liked her. Uh, in 1928, they would marry. Uh, he would have been 40 at the time. She was 25. And uh, she was, uh, would go on and star in many silent films. In 1926 and 27, she starred uh, with her husband. In The Sea Beast, uh, the name of the film is The Sea Beast, and When a Man Loves. In 1928, she co-starred with George O'Brien in the great epic Noah's Ark. Again, that was a, a silent film, but it had some sounds. At that point, uh, as they were going out uh, between uh, silent and sound pictures, they started incorporating little sounds like sound effects and things like that. Um, anyway, so... Uh, time goes on, and where am I at here? <laughs> and she ended up starring in films like The Redeeming Son, um, Glad Ragdoll, Hearts in Exile, and Madonna of Avenue A. All right. Um, talkies were difficult for her because she spoke with a lisp, uh, but became very comfortable after two years of voice coaching. You know, where a lot of them, a lot of the silent stars, as you probably know, uh, came out of the silent era and they couldn't find a lot of roles because uh, some of them, their voices just didn't match their their figure. In fact, um, if you know who um, one of the great silent stars was, um, 
Douglas Fairbanks. He was always this big, tough guy. But when he started doing films, I realized this guy has a really high voice. And he talked like this! You know, so uh, he didn't quite have the uh, gravitas look, uh, that uh, sound that he uh, exuded in his, in his appearance. But uh, uh, Costello, Dolores Costello, was very determined, and she went through voice coaching. Um, she ended up starring in a movie called The Show of Shows, with her sister Helen, and yeah, and continuing on, we see she ended up having children, uh, two children. Dolores, first child was Dolores Ethel May, and John Drew. Uh, having children caused her to lose interest in acting, and in 1931 she retired. Um, her husband, which we'll get to his name, is won't say his name was John. Um, he. Uh, developed a drinking problem in 1935. Um, she ended up divorcing him. And so then in 1936, uh, she ended up coming back to acting and ended up her last um, film, last major film that she starred in was The Magnificent Andersons. Her last film was This Is the Army in 1943, which also starred future president... Not Trump, Donald Trump, Ronald Reagan. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. So, a lot of things happened in her life. And she ended up having uh, developing issues with makeup because the makeup was harsh on her skin. And so she ended up uh, retiring completely and ended up moving to Avocado Farm in Fallbrook, which is about 20 miles from San Diego. So... A flash flood would end up destroying her home in the 70s, and many of her belongings uh, and memorabilia would end up being destroyed. However, to help keep some of you know, what she was known for alive, she ended up doing a series of interviews um, with British Ministries of Hollywood in 1980. Oh, they would have aired in 1980. She would end up passing away on March 1st, 1979 from emphysema at the age of 75 years old in Fallbrook, California. She'd be interned in Calif uh, Calvary Cemetery, uh, which is east of Los Angeles, and has a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, and she was also once known as the goddess of the silent, silent screen. This person that maybe you don't know very well, maybe you don't recognize, maybe you do, I don't know, but if you don't, she is maybe a little bit better known by her ex-husband, John Barrymore, or her granddaughter, who was Drew Barrymore. Drew Barrymore, if you're familiar, played in E.T., Extraterrestrial, uh, Extraterrestrial, Ever After, The Wedding Singer, Fifty First Dates, Charlie's Angels, Fully Loaded, Fever Pitch, and as recently as this year, we'll be starring in a movie called The Stand-In. And that has been your famous Yenzer for today. Her name was Dolores Costello, and I hope you had a nice time getting to know her today. Finally on the program, we have an interview that I uh, did with a lady uh, lady by the name of Mary Ranieri. She is a local artist out of Latrobe, Pennsylvania. However, she's not the uh, major subject of this uh, interview we did. It was actually her 97-year-old mother, Lucy. Uh, Lucy, as I, as I already mentioned, is 97 years old. And along with her daughter, Mary, have started doing uh, just a little cooking show on uh, Facebook Live. Of course, as we've already been talking about uh, the coronavirus and COVID-19 and everybody having to self-quarantine uh, during this time, uh, Lucy and Mary have decided to use this time uh, to sort of, you know, give people some tips. And Lucy's been going through some of her old recipes uh, that date back several de decades and has been helping people out. And so this is a very interesting, um, for me, very interesting uh, interview to conduct. Uh, I'm always fascinated with talking um, with, with you know, people, elderly people, and learning about uh, their time and what they've, went, what they've gone through and what they've done in their life. And so hope, I hope that th this would be uh, an interesting interview to you as well. Now, uh, obviously because of the coronavirus, we couldn't meet in person. So we did the only thing that I knew that we could do. 
And that was we did an interview over the, um, excuse me, over Facebook Messenger on video chat. Um, so without further ado, here is that interview. We hope you enjoy. Today I'm here with uh, Mary Ellen Ranieri and her mother, uh, Lucy. And, uh, and yes, for those of you who are not aware, uh, this is a uh, video going out during the old coronavirus uh, uh, pandemic. So, you know, everybody's got to try to um, uh, sort of adapt to the surroundings. And this is our way of trying to do that here at Yinzer Magazine. Uh, but again, we are here today for this interview, and uh, they're going to tell us a little bit about um, some interesting things uh, that they've been doing uh, during this pandemic. A lot of, and I, I got to say, a lot of interesting things have come out of, of, of what's been going on. Uh, but you guys have started doing some cooking, um, some live cooking online, and uh, we're going to get to that. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Uh, before we do that, tell us a little bit about uh, yourselves, Mary and Lucy. Uh, I'm going to start with my mom. Okay. Mom, uh, my mom is, how old are you? Just tell them a little bit about me. <laughs> I am 97 years old. Oh, wow. <laughs> Said that with a lot of hesitation, but soon to be 98, <laughs> right? No, it's not. Well, 98 in October. So she's October. Not, oh, she's got her ways no. to go, yeah. Her baby, but she uh, baked all her life, and she comes from a really big uh, immigrant family. Huh. Do you want to just tell them about your family and their baking? Well, my mother came from Italy, and she was a famous baker. She was a great bread baker. And my dog, uh, yeah, my dog, my uh, father also came from Italy, and he was great in talents as a, uh, I, I, I think there was nothing he couldn't do. Huh. You name it, he could do it. He knew the house. He did, he did cement work. He just did everything. Mm-hmm. And. So naturally, we were supposed to be around, or weren't supposed to be. We were around, and we were always taught to be able to do something. So this is how I learned. I mean, right, and that's how I learned too. When from the time I think I could walk, I was in the kitchen with my mom, and you know, she was a pretty uh, tough, tough cookie. I taught school a long time, and now mm -hmm. I'm uh, I'm taking orders from mom again. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um... So, uh, Lucy, you said that your family uh, was from Italy. Were you born in Italy, or are you American? Like, were you born here? Born in America. Oh, okay. Born in Italy. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. My mother had nine children. Nine children. Wow. Nine and children. where were you? Where were you amongst all those? You're the middle. Yeah. Yeah. She's the middle. My grandmother didn't speak English. Oh either. wow. Wow. Yeah, and she couldn't read or write. Huh. Um, but she contributed to uh, to her family and to I, I guess she contributed to, to the community. You know, she baked bread and she she was quite self. Yeah, she was very self sufficient. Did uh, took in laundry, baked <coughs> bread, uh, all kinds of stuff. Like she was a great cook. So mm -hmm. uh, what's his name? This is Abraham. Abraham, my mother. Naturally, she couldn't speak English, but she was great for Italian. However, she had this talent of baking. And whenever she made bread, she made 25 pounds at a time. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. And Dad built her an outdoor oven that, that made about, you know, these big cake pans where you see double cakes and so forth? Yeah. Well, anyway, she had about 25 of those, and that's how much she would put in that oven to cook. Wow. Yeah. Leave that. I, I it just, was wonderful. Yeah, it was a wonderful there. house. We, I, I miss it so much. It just, but... <clears throat> it's so good at doing everything and anything. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Yeah. And uh, the fact that she made 25, was that just for the family or was she making them for other people? For the, in those days, what happened, if a person next door ran out of bread, they'd come over and they'd borrow a loaf of bread. And that's just how they would exchange a loaf of bread on if they needed it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like Mrs. Muchka needs a loaf of bread. Take this loaf of bread over to Mrs. Muchka. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and they were all different nationalities too. And they were all good. good. Yeah. yeah, people the neighbors were all wonderful. Yeah. They wow. Them. Uh huh. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. Obviously. So you've you've had obviously the the help and teaching of your parents and 
and now you've had these years of experience yourself. Um, so uh, all these years later, tell us about this idea that you guys had for doing live baking demonstrations online. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> she wants me to do My friend, Maura Richardson, who's another art, a local artist, uh, we were swapping recipes one day, and I said, oh, my mom makes that really well, and I can't remember what it was. And she said, you guys should do an online video. And I said, Maura wants to do an online video. My mom, mm -hmm. like, she's pretty cool about stuff like this. I mean, how many 97-year-olds do you know that face chat? <laughs> well, I don't know many 97-year-olds. <laughs> uh, <laughs> truth you know yeah. so uh, my mom said um yeah okay you know and then we picked an easter bread recipe just because it was um close yeah easy and close to easter and both of us were kind of tired of watching tv we would say i don't want to hear anything else about politics or <laughs> or the bar but you know how that is you just yeah. feel something that you just feel like you just can't really do it anymore so we thought it would be fun to just share and she had so many old recipes that are just practically crumbling now, and she made me get her box out. Mm -hmm. uh, we went through the recipes, and and that's how we did it. And the first time we did it, we had a bunch of people that watched, and then all of a sudden, it just like blew up. And oh I, gosh. I, oh my gosh, I think we have a what? There's like one. Yeah, it's just they're so nice, and they all mm -hmm. just love the fact that we're doing something really, I guess, positive and productive. Yeah, yeah, I, and you're right. You're right. I mean. Uh, it's amazing how, like, just from, it almost seemed like one day, as soon as the coronavirus hit the United States, it's like that's all there was. Uh, yeah. News feed, yeah. the, 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 the national news, and things like that. And, and it's actually interesting to see. Uh, I've seen different um, people starting different pages um, to start, you know, positive uh, games and stuff like that for maybe people that go outside and, and things like that. Um, so yeah, yeah, this is definitely, yeah, it's, it's a positive thing amongst a very, very negative thing. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I think sometimes good comes out of bad, and I think it shows us that side of human nature that we love and mm -hmm. we crave. Yeah. Uh, where we're, we are, everybody's been so kind to us and really complimentary of my mom and, um, just super nice folks all over the world, like. A lady in Sydney, Australia, asked me to please give her a sh have mom say hi to her. They want mom. They don't want me. <laughs> <laughs> She's a star. <laughs> I'm just a kitchen servant, you know. Yeah, right, and right. My, yeah. They want mom to give a shout out, and I had somebody from, oh gosh, Germany and the Ukraine and oh, all over the world, and it was just so. Mom didn't know that like the internet did that. I, she thought it was just, I think, the U.S. at first, right? You right, kind of, I did. Okay. Yeah, so she was huh. overwhelmed by that. Yeah, yeah I can imagine. Um, so <laughs> tell us a little about some of the different things that you guys have made and, and plan on making in the future. Okay, so we made Easter bread. Yeah. And today we are doing the nut roll, and she's really good at rolling it. Um, she looked through her box yesterday, and we decided on... Um, what was that one? You were looking at the biscotti recipe. You went back to that. You kept going back to that biscotti recipe. And you said, that's the one. So we think hmm. next week we're going to do either the biscotti or the Italian rice pie, which I don't know if you're familiar with, Abraham. It's like made with eggs and rice and sometimes raisins. Raisins. Okay. And sometimes Grandma would put in it. Yeah, very little. She didn't like a lot of it. It's delicious. Somebody. And you just eat it like bread. Oh, my gosh. It's so good. Yeah. So we're doing just more baking or maybe meatballs or something fun like that sometime, you know. Yeah. Abraham, I'm making you hungry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little bit, yeah. I don't know much about bacon, but I know all about eating that kind of stuff, so. There you go. Okay. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, I have noticed, uh, obviously, you're getting uh, this uh, interview. I've also noticed there was, I believe, a, 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 in one of the newspapers, uh, they've given you guys some recognition. Um, you guys like have plans of of like putting this out in other ways as well in the future. Um, gee, I don't know. We just sort of did it to do it and help out. I don't know if you want to go like 
we were th I'm thinking on personally I my mom keeps telling me to type out a recipe because I got to tell you Abraham if, you know if you touch them they you know what I mean yeah like, they fall from apart the yeah basically yeah so I really want to do preserve them it's funny though on the internet I told mom last night I get people like can I be your manager I can make <laughs> you <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know wonderful um you know did you ever think of like doing a book I know how to do that and I'm yeah. a promoter. I mean it just came out of the woodwork so right now I think our goal is to like roll the nut rolls today and make everybody happy <laughs> yeah right right um if if people I'm sorry go ahead I'm sorry, if people would like to learn more about, uh, you know, if they'd like to tune in, do you guys have a specific time that you're doing it? And if they'd like to learn more, how can they do so? Yes. Um, we have been doing them on Sundays at 1 o'clock. Okay. It seems like people are kind of not doing a whole lot these days. I know no, I don't have much yeah. acceptable calendar. <laughs> and um, <coughs> also, it's on my Facebook page, uh, Mary Ranieri. Mm -hmm. I think it's Mary Ellen Ranieri. Yeah, Mary Ellen Ranieri. Uh, mm -hmm. For those who don't know how to spell it, how do you spell Ranieri? R A N E R I. Six letters and it rhymes with canary. Exactly. But there's an e it actually rhymes with Mary, Mary Ranieri. But, uh... <laughs> Too bad I don't know Ranieri. Yeah. Right. Right. Uh, <laughs> but I think I might open just a page specifically uh, for my mom. Uh -huh. Like, just a baking page. Somebody's. Some really nice person wrote in and gave us a suggestion. So what's, we're going to sit down and talk about that. Because right now I think we might have close to 3,000 people. And it's just, I know when I get off of the interview with you, when I look, there'll be another couple hundred. And it's mm, just, wow, you know, but it's wonderful crazy. So that's good. Good. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, Lucy, for those who, you know, we live in a uh, pretty instant type of world where, Pretty much everything's microwave, processed food, things like that. For somebody who may um, like to get into baking, what would you say to them to get started? Mm, that's a great question, Buzzer. If somebody wants to bake, what, what's their advice? Like, say they never really baked before. What are you thinking about? Well, they should have, first of all, everything that you need to make, like your flour, your yeast, you just don't wait five to 15 minutes and say, oh, I forgot to get the salt, or I forgot to <laughs> and have everything on hand in front and of you. you. Yes, and especially when you're making bread, you just don't walk away from it. You don't let that dough get cold. You have to keep it either room temperature, you know, not cold. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, when you're, you're baking that day, I think this is what I learned from my mom. When you're baking that day is a commitment. Right. You know, you're not like you can't socialize or anything. Right. You have to concentrate <laughs> on what you're doing. And I mean, it, it isn't being rude. But you've got a lot of work there to do. And it's it's time consuming. Sure it is. It's hours of work for a day. You know, you're you're gonna devote probably close to about five or six hours with the raising time. So you just want to set aside time and make sure you have all your um, all your materials and um, get a rolling pin. <laughs> <laughs> or get a broom handle. That's what my mom said. Yeah. The old um, good one. Yeah. Um, so what what would you say is your favorite recipe to make? Your favorite recipe. Who do you think you like to bake the best? Favorite thing to make, yeah. Oh, geez. Do you think, like, buns or biscottis? I, when I had quit making all rolls, I was making cinnamon rolls. Cinnamon rolls, I think, was her big thing. Uh huh. I, I could whip them up in no time. Awesome. Like, they are so good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, she used to bake, actually sell it. And, oh, I used to the church. And the, the church would come up. Yeah, the priest would always have her bake for the church and stuff. So. Yeah. She still got, got the old fire in the tank and baked cinnamon buns. <laughs> yeah. And um, another thing, too, like, you've been obviously baking for uh, quite a few years. Um, how has baking changed over the years That's like a great question. as far as like um, different tools to use and things like that I don't use different tools I, use, I, I still <laughs> have the mold oh really I don't uh. use many because my hands were my tools oh, okay be mean to be smart about that but it it tells me your hands how you're gonna work that dough 
how long are we going to work it? How are you going to fix it? Are you going to let it get cold? You just don't start making something and then walk away from it and say, oh, I have to do this for five minutes. And then you don't do that. You concentrate and keep doing it until you're finished. Yeah. That's a great answer. I love that answer. <laughs> I yeah. think she she's mostly uh, unhappy because we're having such a hard time finding cake yeast. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, the, way to do it yeah i was actually thinking you know what with all the shortages and everything like that it must be uh difficult to to try to to get some of this stuff done you know even even during the year it's hard to find cake yeast they want to give you the uh dry stuff dry stuff (laughs) they have the little fleshman cakes yeah she wants the little fleshman cakes yeah (laughs) (laughs) yeah um so uh this week you guys you guys talked about what you made this week do you guys uh, know, have any plans for what you're going to be doing next week? Uh, next week, we decided on biscottis, right? <laughs> you pulled it out. So, <laughs> yeah, we're going, do, we're going to do biscottis next week. Um, no yeast. No okay. yeast biscottis. Everybody ought to be happy about that. They don't have to go get up at <laughs> 6 o'clock and find it. Because that's people I had hundreds and hundreds of people. That was the old Italian person. Right, the old Italian yeah asking me for yeast so i told them i had a little extra i would put it in my mailbox if they wanted to drive past i'll give it to them yeah and um nobody actually you know at that point they said oh well i think they felt bad and i said i don't care we'll give them yeast come on yeah. like yeast, they get yeast. yeah so. yeah um and of course for those uh who may not know um lucy obviously a magnificent cook uh, mary you're actually uh, a pretty good artist as well I try. I'm dabbling, you know. <laughs> now I'm going to finish my, I hope to finish my degree in May, and right now I'm into uh, to drawing. I have a really good teacher uh, for my last class, Michael McDivitt. It's been very, uh, very tough on him because of this. All teachers, I give a big shout out to me, and I don't know how. They scrambled, and they got it together, and they are going on Zoom and online. God bless them. You know, it's that was a lot of work, and it's been working out though. And I did learn a lot in the class, and I it's not done yet. And I think I'll learn more, even though we don't get to meet. I'm sad about that, yeah. Uh, because I did learn quite a bit. So keep keep um, stay tuned for my la- next graphite piece. I'm doing a scene from Nosferatu. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, this has been Abraham Klein. Here today with Mary Ranieri and her mother Lucy, uh, yeah. sort of sort of getting to know them, talking about um, their cooking show uh, that they've been doing live on Facebook uh, the past couple weeks. Very interesting, just uh, sort of getting to know them, talking about um, you know. And if there's anything I took from this, you got to be very, um, I guess you could say, consistent, devoted to your cooking, right? Got to be very <laughs> devoted. You can't can't walk away. Yeah. Right. So anyway, uh, if you like this video, uh, please like, share, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And Yins, have a great day. And thank you, ladies, for, for joining us today. Thank you. All right. Well, that was the program. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it today. Uh, again, just trying to uh, go with the flow with everything that's been going on in the world. Again, we hope that you enjoyed the program. Don't forget to follow uh, the Inter Club on Facebook, uh, as well as uh, go on to our website, yinzerclub.com, uh, and buy some of that lovely Yinzer Club merch. Also, don't forget to follow Idiot Radio and the many different uh, programs on there. I mean, you got the Triple B Experience, you got the Double D and Triple B uh, Heavyweight Podcast, uh, you got the Todd DeFazio Show, I believe there's a cooking show, all sorts of other great programs here on Idiot Radio. And of course, um, Todd's been doing a weekly comedy quarantine. I forget the exact name of it. Uh, But on Saturday nights, he's been going live with Idiot Radio to do uh, comedy here on uh, on the Idiot Radio um, website and all the different platforms it's on. So definitely lots of content for you to watch here from Idiot Radio while you're staying inside. Um, So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this program. Hope you've enjoyed it. Um, Hope you'll join us again next time for another episode of Yenza Club. This is Abraham Klein saying, Yenza, have a great day.